Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Chase. And I'm Joby. This is the 2024 Hyundai Kona and this is the Overrun. As mentioned previously, this is the 2024 Hyundai Kona. This specific model is the limited front wheel drive version, which includes the optional 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, which produces 190 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. There is also the base two liter engine, which is also a four cylinder, which produces 147 horsepower and 135 pound-feet of torque. The base Hyundai Kona starts at around 24,000, but this one as configured, before all-wheel drive is just over $33,000, but you can add all-wheel drive for about $1,500, which if you live in a snowy, cold climate like we do, might be worth it. But yeah, that's the overall numbers for the brand new 2024 Hyundai Kona. Now, in our eyes, this car's biggest competitor is the Subaru Crosstrek that starts at $25,000 and runs all the way up to the $33,000 $32,000, excuse me, uh, Crosstrek Wilderness. Now that's powered by a two liter flat four with 152 horsepower. Now the Crosstrek's biggest advantage is its off-roadiness. The Wilderness trim is both cheaper than the Kona and offers significantly more off-road capability. But as we'll come to find out, the Kona is able to kind of hit back with a little bit more luxury and some better warranty and pricing. All right, so let's take a look at the exterior first. This is obviously all brand new for this model year. Uh, it got a big refresh inside and out so there's quite a lot to go over we're just going to touch on the big highlights obviously there's this brand new front end here with this nice light bar there's also these little active grilly thingies here uh, those will open when the car gets hot or when you've been sitting in traffic wanting to die for a few hours there's also the lighting arrangement that's been moved down here and there's all of this plastic cladding all the way down the side Hyundai's also introduced some new wheel designs, which you can see here. This is one of the many that are offered. These are for the uh, limited trim. They're the 19 inch wheel design. Uh, and then moving around the back, we've got this little kind of silvery swoopy thing that goes onto the spoiler, comes down here. Everybody wave to the A-line. And then going around the back, there is another light bar back here. Uh, these are basically your DRLs in back brake lights, reverse lights, etc. in here, uh, and then some badging. I think overall it looks pretty good. Uh, it's definitely the most modern looking of its competitive set. I think it looks quite a lot more modern than its nearest competitor, the Subaru Crosstrek. Subaru obviously goes for the much more rugged angle, and this is a little bit more swoopy, modern, edgy. Um, really, it's down to personal preference. I like them both. Okay, so let's talk interior. Um, this is obviously all new as well. Uh, there's Hyundai's new dual screen that's actually one screen kind of setup. Uh, they're 12 -ish inch touchscreens or touchscreen singular. There's also a new wheel with some wheel mounted controls. You've got some paddle controls here. Um, and then this is your gear selector here. You can kind of tilt one way or the other to do various things. Uh, and then over here, we've got the climate controls, which thankfully are all physical. Uh, you can adjust them as such. There's also three levels of intensity for the auto function, which is actually quite nice. Now down here is kind of my favorite part of the interior. This is very clever. You can either switch this single USB-C port to data and charging, or push the button to just charge. If you've got, say, another device that just needs to charge while you run Android Auto or CarPlay wirelessly. And then down here, you've got all of your seat controls uh, for heating and ventilation, which is standard on the limited trim, as well as heated steering wheel, drive mode, auto hold, cameras, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I know I just said that the climate controls are my favorite part because they're physical, but really the center console is probably the most well thought out part of this interior. Uh, there's these neat, handy rotating cup holder things that you can do that with. And then this can be pulled out and removed in conjunction with this to create a totally open area down here to store some larger items like maybe a big handbag. Uh, it's very, very well thought out, certainly more so than the Crosstrek. And up here at least, it is quite a lot nicer than the comparable Subaru Crosstrek. Now let's also talk about the infotainment system, which is new for the Kona this year. Um, this is kind of Hyundai Kia Genesis's democratized infotainment system. Everybody uses it. Uh, the level of configurability that you get in the gauge cluster kind 
kind of varies. Here you can just tog uh, to toggle uh, through some of the different settings for uh, either your ADAS displays or your fuel economy, things like that. Uh, over here in the center screen, you can, as you see, be able to go into Android Auto. There's also a voice memo function and some other things. The screen itself is very responsive. Uh, so is the map function. It's generally pretty solid. And there's also some hard backup controls down here that you can use to get to various functions. If, for example, you have Android Auto up, you can move through all of your tracks and then come back here to get to the home screen. Now we're in the rear seats of the Hyundai Kona and there's nothing too noteworthy. It's pretty basic uh, interior back here, but there are a couple of cool things. First, we have two USB-C ports right here. Um, so if you have two passengers that need to charge something here in the back of the Kona, you can do that. Um, but other than that, there's not like a ton of cargo space back here. There's actually not even a net behind the driver's seat. There is a little one right here. Uh, which you could throw something in if you wanted to. There are these fold down cup holders, but this can obviously just go back in if you don't need those. Um, overall, there's actually a pretty good amount of leg room. This is where I would normally sit. I'm about 5'9 for reference, and I still have plenty of leg room here, and the seat could actually come back quite a bit as well. In terms of headroom, Again, I got plenty. I'm 5'9". If you're taller than me, then that might vary a little bit. But in general, it's a pretty nice place to be back here, at least in terms of room. And obviously, the added connectivity is a huge benefit as well. And lastly, let's talk about cargo space here in the Kona. As you can see, we have a ton of crap back here, all from our camera bags. There's about 25.5 cubic feet of cargo space in the Kona, which by comparison, the Crosstrek only has about 20 cubic feet. And the cool party trick of the rear is there's actually a bunch of hidden storage, which is probably meant for a spare tire, but there's not one in here. Uh, so you do have that additional cargo space underneath. And there's this little, whatever, kind of hatch cover as well, which a lot of other smaller cars have. But yeah, there's plenty back here. As you can tell, we fit a bunch. Yeah, welcome to Colorado in winter, um, which this is handled pretty well, right? For the most part- You drove yeah. it in the snow, didn't you? Yeah, I, I drove it pretty heavily in the snow. Uh, for the most part, it handled well. I mean, obviously the all-wheel drive version would handle even better, but I didn't have any issues. I mean, nothing stands out as like scary or Yeah, anything. this wasn't like a nasty storm either. We didn't get to drive it in any real accumulation, um, but you know, for 1500 bucks, adding all-wheel drive is pretty cheap. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that honestly, like I, I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of these just got specced with it. Yeah. Because it is so cheap and it makes so much sense. And you, I think you lose maybe two or three MPG. Yeah. Overall, it's, it's, it's so worth it to just get the all wheel drive. Yeah. Um, how did you think it drove? I think in general, I really liked it. There's a couple of things that I didn't like. Um, I wish the steering was a little bit heavier. Um, I thought it was. Oh, we're going to have that argument again. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do this again. I wish it was a little bit heavier. I like the steering; it's uh, so light. <laughs> yeah, I, that's a personal preference, probably. But uh, the other thing is, I wish the brake pedal was a little bit stiffer. Um, it felt like I really little, had to push okay. in. Yeah. Um, and it felt a little, I don't know, soft. Yeah, I didn't really like that. But other than that, I mean, the overall handling of the car was great. The ride is great. It's also pretty quiet in here. Yeah, for thirty-three thousand dollars, this car is really, really really hushed and quiet you really don't hear much unless you're like wide open throttle and yeah even then um you know uh, overall i thought it was great yeah um i i agree with you on the ride i think it's i think it's really nice for its price point i think it rides probably just a little bit softer than the cross trek um i love like the way that you interact with these cars when you mm -hmm. drive them the hyundai stuff um, we've mentioned them before, but the little turn signal bubble thing that you get down here yeah. so you can see your blind spot yep. is super nice. Um, speaking of assists, I think that the majority of them work a little well. We're both kind of a little wishy-washy on the lane keep and auto steer. Mm -hmm. um, they're just okay. I don't like using those systems anyways. Yeah. I would rather just drive the thing myself. Um, the other thing that we noticed, and it could just be this car, it could be the circumstances under which we were using it, but we both noticed that there, uh, the adaptive cruise control system had a little bit of trouble just kind of keeping up with traffic. Um, if someone accelerates by 10 or 15 miles an hour and pulls away from you in front of you, it takes the car a little bit to get going. Mm -hmm. Um, which brings me to my next point. There's a lot of turbo lag on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that the majority of people probably aren't really going to notice, but it's definitely something worth pointing out. The Subaru, because it's naturally aspirated, feels a lot more responsive, even though I like this transmission a lot more. I think it's a little bit more responsive, um, which makes driving a little bit easier. 
but I mean, oof, that was a big one. Yeah. But I, overall, I really don't have any complaints with this driving position either. I, I think that it's a really nice driving position. I can put both of my elbows down and yep. just kind of steer with my fingertips. The visibility is fantastic. Um, even out the rear three quarter, it's pretty good, um, mm -hmm. which is something that a lot of the CUV crossover stuff kind of misses on. Yeah. Um, so that's nice. There's all the cameras you would need. The camera's functionality in here is really nice. Yeah. Oh, and it's like that across all of the Hyundai and even the Genesis models that we've driven so far. I mean, the cameras are debatably one of the best parts of all the infotainment and whatever. I mean, the top down 360 camera is really, really great for getting into tight parking spots. Uh, the cameras also come on automatically, which is super nice. Um, so yeah. Yeah, the parking system's great too. The the like object recognition is really good. It's super accurate, and yeah. it doesn't like it doesn't scream at you like some of the Toyota stuff does. If yep. you're too close, it just lets you know. Um, I, I prefer that. Yeah. The less yelling a car does, the better. I agree. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really great driving experience. I definitely prefer driving this on the day to day to the cross trek, uh, just because it is that little bit nicer. Yeah. Totally. All right, now let's go ahead and wrap up our review of the 2024 Hyundai Kona. Chase, what do you think? Um, so I'm of two minds here. I think that kind of depending on the person you are, one of these two cars is going to fit you a little bit better. Um, I'm kind of in Camp Crosstrek because it is just that little bit cheaper, first of all. And second of all, the Wilderness trim, which is far and away the Crosstrek to get, offers significantly more off-road capability. I would say that this offers functionally zero. Um, these are like Kumho, whatever, <laughs> AT mm -hmm. tires, or uh, I'm sorry, all-season tires. Um, you know, the Crosstrek, you lose a little bit in terms of features and luggage capacity and gain so, so much in off-road capability. So if that matters to you, the Crosstrek is the way to go. Uh, but if you're gonna be commuting, hauling family around and not really doing a lot of outdoor stuff, I think that this is probably a little bit nicer. You get ventilated seats and some other features that the Crosstrek just straight doesn't have. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't really have too much to add. I just wanted to say I love all the different interior features that the Kona offers, especially at the price point. Um, it is probably one of the best values in the you know, total automotive world right now for $33,000 uh, with all that this offers uh, is pretty insane. Obviously that's gonna vary on the trim that you select, but this one is pretty incredible with all the features and value. So, yeah, especially with the uh, modularity in the center console, mm -hmm. um, the connectivity, yeah. I, it's just, it's really well thought out. Yep. Yeah, totally. Totally agree. But anyways, that is going to wrap up our review. Tell us what you think about the new fully redesigned 2024 Kona in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like. And if you want to see content like this in the future, please consider subscribing as well. With all that, we appreciate you watching the video and we will catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye.